Uh, hi everyone, uh, you can call me Echoes. Uh, I'm a VTuber and I'll be uh, talking a bit about uh, Gundam Witch of Mercury. Um, not, it's not uh, just an episode reaction, but I'll instead be reacting to an interview by Takuya Okamoto, who, who is the series producer, and also I'll be talking a bit about the side story that takes place between the prologue and episode 1. So starting with the interview, uh, I found it really interesting because it provided a bit of extra behind-the-scenes information that wasn't uh, previously mentioned. So, as you can see here, um, the production started around early 2020, uh, or spring 2020, which is around when the pandemic started, coincidentally enough. It looks like they uh, decided ahead of time that the show would have a female protagonist, and then they would have to find the uh, respective staff who would help uh, who would help um, create the show. Mm -hmm. And so, so it looks like this Hiroshi uh, Kobayashi was known for Storybrand Ironblood Orphans, Kiznaiver, and also Dragon uh, Pilot, Isotan Masatan. So he would be a very so uh, solid and skilled director. And especially since Witch of Mercury isn't part of the UC um, era, as it is an original spinoff, it would mean that um, the director would have a lot more creative liberty in regards to this. So as mentioned, he had, we had to conceive a world from scratch while keeping Gundam's undertones. And also felt, he felt that the director would be a very good fit. So yeah, so it looks like the director is very capable, and respectively, the show should also reflect that as well. Um, so Ichihiro Okuchi, who is writing the script and also series composition, was known for Turn A Gundam, and also, if you look online, he also is known for creating side story novels for Revolutionary Girl Utena, which you'll notice um, from the first episode, uh, in particular, of Witch of Mercury. And looks like he... In regards to writing, so he had the female protagonist in mind, and also Okuji came in mind because he could also use that female protagonist and also create a respectively strong script. And respectively, he's known for Code Geass, and recently was known for Princess Principle, which had very captivating interactions, as mentioned. So yeah, so it looks like he, um, the producer could talk with a variety of people he found capable. Let's see. Planning of the, so they're involved with the planning part. So in the beginning, obviously, they're brainstorming for ideas. And Witch of Mercury actually came from a creative team by the name of Morin Airline. Made of two people, Hisadake and Mogumo. Hisadake is involved with setting cooperation. Mogumo is involved with the character designs. Uh, if you notice in Witch of Mercury's uh, prologue and uh, first episode, the character designs are rather distinctive. And because it actually helps uh, make helps make the character set up uh, stand out among other shows, which is quite good. And also different from other Gundam series too. Rob time. It looks like Witch and Mercury came from the original brainstorming process and seemed to have stuck around since then. Mogula's character design, so so along with, was quite eye catching, which is rather good. Like anything Gundam has ever offered before. So it looks like Gundam is continuing to try to innovate and also create a more unique visual spectacle. It also brought JN THED, Gen Thed, um, who are they really the creator? They're known for uh, mecha designs. And Axel on the board. So Gen Thed was known for uh, working on Spriggan. And it looks like he went involved with a mecha design competition helped um, create really unique um, Gundam designs. So that, it was a design that didn't fit the typical mold, which is what, what's expected of Gundam, but also it matched what they were looking for. So that makes sense that they decided to bring him along. Uh, you can actually see, uh, bleh, see Gen Thed's, um, let's see, you can see his illustration, right? I actually uh, retweeted it earlier. Yeah, right here. So this is actually his uh, Genthed's uh, illustration. It is one of the, the main mecha, uh, mecha involved people. If you could see between. Yeah. So this is the illustration end card from him. Okay. 
And then uh, company is so starts probably start in July. So when you look at the world around necess around you today, so one sec. Quite different. So in general, the story depicted starting in prologue in the episode one, well, rather than being specifically a war between countries or allied forces, instead a conflict between corporations, which I found rather interesting. So, so I guess, yep. So when you look at, uh, what's interesting about this is his, uh, what he said. So when you take a look at the world around you today, the power of nation isn't necessarily what makes the world go around, right? The world of Stella, the stage of the show, is a similar world the world to our own. It's one where a huge economic network has been formed by many companies that have expanded space, where a social system that transcends the freedom of nations is being woven together by a corporate entity that has been brought together only the most powerful among companies. So it's, it's sort of a reflection of actually the modern era where companies pretty much dominate the world. Very, um, a significantly more relatable setting than the typical war-driven one, and since the show was conceptualized, uh, it went around when the pandemic started, it would mean that the Russian-Ukraine war wasn't a thing then. So prologue was pretty much so releasing very information. So set it okay. So okay, so mostly is focused on de depicting what the world is like in the structure, which makes sense. <clears throat> Talk about the corporations as well. So, and also their emphasis on reaching out to the younger generation. Especially since Gundam also often is more, they call more watched by older fans, it's good that they're trying to reach a more younger uh, audience overall. We felt that major war between power, major nations, something like nations, pity against nations, wouldn't seem as realistic and would be difficult to connect with, which makes sense. We haven't had a major war in quite some time, excluding the Russian Ukraine. Um, smartphones, online shopping are pretty easy to navigate. But most of what we own and use is owned by specific corporations, which makes sense. So, in a way, everyone connect with that idea. So instead of focusing on war, you'll be focusing on the society dominated by corporations. Position of so governments do exist, but also the co corporations seem to be pretty much the major powers. <laughs> uh, the rich are always dominating the world, huh? Kind of organization. So the mobile suit is comprised of several corporations involved in the mobile suit industry. Prologue, they announced the formation of Cathedra Auditing Organization. So the auditing means that they're pretty much making sure that any corporations involved have to have like a certain um have to be doing the right things, if you get what I mean. So making sure uh, it's pretty much uh keeping an eye on them and regulating them, especially when it comes with money. That's what auditing is. Mm -hmm. Also in regards to the about Gundam itself. <clears throat> so what's interesting is that in the prologue of Witch and Mercury, they showcase the council that, you know, made up of the corporations is rejecting Gundams. So in, 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 it appeared the Gundam were under um, enormous strain because it looks like the Gundam or the Gundam like technology involved had a very severe strain on the pilots and could also pretty much could cause severe injury, whether it's mentally or physically. This is an uh, interesting technology that I haven't seen before. So one of the inherent dangers of the Gundam type is the existence of Gunbit, a remote-controlled weapon that uses the Gundam uh, format technology. Officially, it's known as Next Generation Remote Control Swarm Weapon System, so it stands to reason that trying to operate such a complex weapon would burden the human body tremendously. If load were to become excessive, it would take the pilot's life. So that's why... Um, so yeah, so in general, it's a very, very high-tech type of weapon. But also, because it's weapon and because it's machinery, it also means that humans aren't naturally meant to adapt to it. In respect of why people, why they can believe that the Gundam is cursed. Which is interesting because Gundams are often considered weapons in the series, but never specifically meant to harm humans. For this reason, the existence of the Gundam type, which employs the Gundam format, is considered a humanitarian issue, and it's why the Momosu Development Council has disavowed and denied the Gundam. So to depict the dangers of the Gundam, we had to consider the Gundam's role as a weapon. Gundam may be portrayed as here, a uh, messianic even, but I think it could be said as the exact opposite. Very much uh, a reverse of what's typically depicted in the Gundam series. What's one special? Okay. So as in several scenes, 
it was once medical technology. Yes, it was. We've seen several scenes. People like you call it advanced body augmentation technology for prosthetic arms and limbs to compensate for missing limbs and even spinal cord injuries. Uh, extremely important that it's uh, used for medical reasons. Um, if you see the ending of the prologue, not the black screen one, there, you could actually see it with the images. Um, pretty much it shows how this technology is used to improve people's lives and allow them to live normal, like normal people again. Even if they're missing arm, a leg, or even a spinal cord, which, as you know, is very de debilitating, especially if you lose your spinal cord, it may mean that you lose ability to walk or use your arms or even like be able to do very basic things. So in reality, it helps, helps people gain their lives back. Elnora is uh, Aragor Suleta's mother, by the way. So, are only things that are supplemented. You could also do vision hearing. And Dr. Uh, Carlo Nabo, who looks like is a main researcher, uses supplements uh, to her body functions, which includes an eye and also some sort of headpiece. So, why was this technology converted for military applications? The only says for medical research development cannot move forward without funding, right? So in order to get the money, they have to use it in the military. Finally, it's not into what Nora was, in, was re working, research organization that developed GUND, but without sponsorship, it would have been impossible to continue with their research. There's a company on Earth called Oak Earth that developed mobile suits that reach out to them. So it looks like this is to provide them technology in exchange for money. Makes sense, especially with the whole idea of corporations and need to have some sort of financial backing to uh, supplement such intense research. In uh, like the prologue, so the main series does set in school. Each house has most of the company that backs them. So the Estacasia School of Technology is run by the Banner, Banner Group, largest corporation in the mobile phone industry. So many students have enrolled, have parents in key position, which makes sense. As a result, there is a large, strong corporate connection between the house and the company, and most who's used by students are developed by the very companies behind them. So yeah, so it looks like a uh, yeah. School is run by the companies themselves, and then respectively, your children very much feels like a very much a corrupt school in that way. <laughs> oh man, connections, characters from PV, mass figure. So, we'll figure out who that mass figure is. Story will focus on characters from the younger generation, only show a unique breadth of the series, also doing the adult side of the drama. So, you get both the adults and the children fighting. This is Gundam, but it's not a straightforward story, which is good, means that there has a lot of added complexity. And we're putting it out so it can be enjoyed by all generations from existing fans to younger generation. Hope you enjoy watching it. Hmm. So yeah, overall, uh, a lot of interesting good insight to think about, especially with how they conceptualize the series to focus on corporations rather than typical modern warfare. And also wanting to appeal to the younger and more modern generation, which uses more advanced technology. Very, very cool stuff, I, 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 must, I must say.